3D printing is the primary method of making that we've covered on this channel, but in the past we have looked at a couple of others, including lasers and CNC machines. My first large 3D printer project was the MPCNC, or Mostly Printed CNC Machine, about seven years ago. I've wanted to dive further into these technologies for some time, but living situations had made it incredibly difficult. Until now. My heavily modified K40 CO2 laser was not able to fit into the U-Haul, so it's currently sitting at my parents' house in the garage back in California. So I was really excited when Guayki Cloud reached out asking if I was interested in testing out their 50 watt CO2 laser. They sent this laser over for a three month trial back in September, so I've had a few months now to test it out and put it through its paces. So in today's video, we will be diving into the Guayki Cloud Pro. We'll go over the laser specs, what the setup process was like, how it is performed, and some of the things that I've done with it, and I will give you my final thoughts based on my experience so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. At the time of recording this, we are really close to 100,000 subscribers, and I anticipate by the time it goes live, we will be there. So I did schedule a celebration live stream on January 4th at noon Pacific Standard Time. Aaron's going to be there helping out, and there is a ton of giveaways and just awesome stuff. So if you're interested in the live stream, I will have that link down below, and I hope to see you there. Like we typically do, let's first jump into the specs. The Guayki Cloud CO2 lasers come in three options, which are the Guayki Cloud, the Cloud Pro and the RF metal tube version. As far as I can tell, the only difference between the Cloud and the Cloud Pro is that the Cloud Pro includes two rotary setups for engraving cylindrical objects, and that's the version that we will be covering in this video. The Guayki Cloud is a compact 50 watt CO2 laser with a work area of 510 by 300 millimeters. The laser rides up and down on a small lead screw, giving you up to two inches of material depth if you remove the included honeycomb tray. As far as machine footprint, you'll want four feet in length. That's for the machine as well as the little side box that includes the filtration system as well as the air assist. And you'll want about 30 inches in depth. That will be for the machine and then the exhaust tube sticking off the back. It may be a fairly compact CO2 laser compared to a lot of other machines out there, but its combination of heavy metal frame and its glass top has it weighing 45.6 kilograms or roughly right at 100 pounds. So it's definitely a team lift and something you'll want to have a dedicated space for. As far as design goes, it looks an awful lot like the Glowforge lasers from the overall look of it down to the one button on top with the LED surrounding it, which is definitely what they were going for. Each of the product pages on their website has the laser being compared to the Glowforge machines. Both the X and Y axis ride back and forth on linear rails with thick belts and all of the wires and the air assist and the coolant is all routed nicely through very large cable chains. There is an internal water cooler, a five megapixel wide angle camera mounted to the lid, and it comes with a side unit that houses the filter along with the air assist pump. There's a slide out tray in the front that will allow you to remove the honeycomb mesh bed for cleaning to use the included pass through slot if you're trying to engrave objects that are larger than the actual footprint of the laser and it'll allow you to place the rotary. There's a sensor on the top lid as well as that front panel. So if you have a job running and you open the top or that front panel, it will kill the laser. However, when you are using the pass through or the rotary, it actually has you bypass the front sensor. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. I originally planned on doing a bunch of speed and power tests but Guayki Cloud actually has a table on their website that has a lot of materials uh, at various thickness and the recommended speeds and powers for cutting and engraving on those materials. And that's primarily what I stuck with. And I've had really good luck with that. So sure, you can run your own testing, but the values set on there, I feel comfortable in stating are nearly spot on. The laser shipped via freight in a large crate that was strapped down to a wooden pallet. It actually took me a while to get the machine out of that wooden crate by removing all of the little metal pieces on top, but I'd much rather have something like that than risk having the laser arrive damaged. We set up the laser and ran our first job back in September all on live stream over on the Modbot Army channel. If you're interested in checking that out, I will have links over to that in the description. The setup process was pretty straightforward, but there wasn't any included documentation. All of that is on their website. They do have really detailed videos as well as uh, PDF guides that you can follow along, but it would have been nice to have at least a little something to tell you how to set up the basics included with the laser, because if you're setting this up in your garage or a shop where maybe you just don't have 
the best internet connection, it would be nice to at least have a little physical paper to get you up and running. There was a small acrylic dial on the laser head basically showing that at the factory they had tested that all of the mirrors for the laser were aligned, and I can verify that I didn't have to do any sort of calibration from when I received the machine, it was just ready to go, which was a huge plus. I'm not saying that there's no cases where these will arrive and you won't have to do a little bit of alignment because freight can still be pretty rough on machines, but in my case, everything was fine and I did not have to do any tuning or adjusting. The laser includes their $120 material package that has five pieces of acrylic, cardboard, MDF and basswood that is the full size of the laser work area, which is awesome. Similar to Glowforge, if you do use their software, the material from them has little QR codes that scanning them will set the correct speed, power, and height of the Z-axis in relation to the material. We did briefly try out their software during the live stream, and although it does have some basic functionality, it was pretty lackluster. One huge benefit of the Guayki Cloud over the Glowforge is that you are not tied down to cloud-based software. They do have the option for that if that's what you want, but it is fully compatible with Lightburn, which is the software I was using back with the K40, and the one I'm most familiar with. So aside from the initial testing, everything else was just ran locally, not over the network using Lightburn. Another cool thing is that their camera that's included on the lid connects to their controller, which is not compatible with Lightburn. So they started to ship all the lasers with a little adapter that you unhook the wire that's hooked up to it, hook up the new wire, which then turns it into a USB camera, which will allow you to use the camera functionality baked into Lightburn. So you don't lose any of those features or functionality, which is really nice because that camera allows you to easily align your designs onto your material. Over the past few months, my parents, my brother and my sister-in-law all visited and all of them got to play around with the CO2 laser and all left with a little souvenir. For my dad, he wanted us to make a little cutout of the spool bus, the Modbot spool bus. So uh, we engraved this and cut it out. For my mom, she wanted the Swedish Dalla horse. And for my sister-in-law, we did the biggest engraving and cut that I have done on the machine, which was pretty much full size in one direction on it, which was on basswood three millimeters, we engraved her nonprofit logo and we cut out the piece of wood and the laser did an absolutely awesome job. The engravings on wood were all ran at between 450 to 500 millimeters a second. And for the cuts, we ran them at between 15 to 20 millimeters a second. Image engraving on lasers is awesome, but definitely a science. And I spent a little bit of time playing around with a couple of portraits and the Guayki Cloud did a fantastic job of capturing a lot of detail, but there is still a lot more stuff that I can do on the image editing side to make these pop and be even more crisp. Boosting contrast, setting the correct image mode, adjusting DPI and interval for the specific image and material can all make a huge difference in the finished product. Along with engraving, cutting materials is something I was really interested in. I got a ton of filament in from Polymaker for the one year stream anniversary on the Modbot Army channel and just had a lot of filament that has sort of piled up and I wanted a better storage solution. So rep rack or Pooch from RepCord created the RepRack, which is an awesome open source filament storage solution. And you can use 3D printed parts or you can use laser uh, lasers to cut out some of the brackets. So I ran down to Home Depot and grabbed some six millimeter ply that I then took the circular saw, chopped down into smaller pieces and cut out, I believe eight, one, two, three, four, five, Yes, eight different brackets that's been holding roughly 30 plus spools of filament for the last couple of months here. And the laser did an awesome job. On the really light wood, there was a tiny bit of charring on top that if I had just thrown some masking tape over the top would have prevented that. But I ended up taking it through my orbital sander just very quickly to clean up some of that. And I am really happy with the end result. It is very cool being able to combine laser cutting and 3D printing to make functional parts. I cut out some small hangers for the baby's closet to separate the clothes by month, a bunch of hexagons that I stacked to make a small artsy bowl, and I found what might be the coolest pencil organizer that is made up of quite a few parts that I cut out of MDF. The parts fit together really well and the pattern used to cut out the wood which sort of allows it to bend or turn it into a hinge is awesome. Other than playing around with woods, acrylics is something that I was really interested in testing out. And I had some colored acrylic that I cut out a few of these little Voron logos and it took me a couple of tries to get the kerf correctly, which is basically your tolerance is because every time you use the laser, it's actually removing some material. So you cut something out, you measure it, you see how much material was removed, and then you input that value into the software and it will adjust for that. And so 
These are all just pressure fit together. If I hold them up to a light, you can see some light shining through, so they're not perfect, but I was still really impressed considering that these are both just, again, held together. They're, they're, they're pretty tight. <laughs> they're just held together by pressure. So uh, it did a great job of really clean cuts on the acrylic. And again, just impressed with the sort of tight tolerances it's able to hit with just a slight bit of adjustment. Clear acrylic is something that is used for a lot of 3D printer enclosures and all of the Voron printers use clear acrylic for their enclosures as well. So I decided I wanted to customize the Vorons that I had. So I took both of the V0s as well as the switch wires and I engraved their ser serial numbers onto the front of them. And it, it did an absolutely amazing job. The cutting, both cutting of clear acrylic, which one of my buddies came over and we cut front door panels for his Trident. It did a great job as well as engraving on clear acrylic. It just looks fantastic. And that is one huge benefit of using a CO2 laser over something like a diode laser. Diode lasers just aren't able to engrave on clear acrylic the way that CO2 lasers are. And I'm really happy with the end results. I don't do a lot of rotary stuff in general, but I did want to test this out because that is really the defining feature that separates the Guayki Cloud from the Cloud Pro. With the Pro, they provide you with two different rotaries with one of them working with objects that have a diameter between 30 to 60 millimeters and the other one working with objects between 60 to 74 millimeters in diameter. Ironically, the tumblers that I had were too large, the dowels that I had were too small, and when I thought I got creative and grabbed an insert of some toilet paper, it was too light. So I wasn't able to actually test out the engraving, but I did set everything up to see how it all worked and ran at least a framing command to make sure that everything was operating the way that it should. The process involves removing the front panel and sliding out the honeycomb bed, placing the rotary and plugging it into the back of the machine before flipping the switch that enables the rotary and disables the Y-axis. Then you align the sticker on top of the laser tube with the sticker on the laser's frame and slide a tab to trigger the limit switch, tricking the laser into thinking that it is closed. I loaded a job and ran a framing command just to make sure that the y-axis rollers and the x-axis were working as they should, and it had no issue. So doing rotary, if that's something you're interested in, shouldn't be a problem. The thing I would caution is to make sure that if you get this or are considering getting it for a certain tumbler type or product, make sure that it fits within the given parameters because again, the stuff I had here just did not work with the Guayki Cloud. I'm also not crazy about the rotary requiring you to basically trigger the switch so that way it thinks the front closed and you leave the front open while you're running a rotary job. I really think that if they had just included a small panel to sort of pop in place while you're running a rotary, that would have been a much better option. And I hope it's something that they consider including in the future. As far as features and functionality, the Guayki Cloud and Cloud Pro at between $2,600 to $3,200, depending on the current sale, offers a lot. And when you compare that to the $7,000 Glowforge Pro, which from my Research seems like that is the closest version to the Guayki Cloud Pro. It is less than half of the cost. And on top of that, if you want to get the filtration system for the Glowforge, it's another $1,300, which is included with the Guayki Cloud system. So if you're looking at them from a price perspective, it is certainly an attractive offer compared to the Glowforge. However, no machine is perfect. And over the last couple of months, I put together a few notes during my time using this laser. On stream, we set up everything in here on this table. We hooked up the machine, we hooked up the filtration system, and I believe we had the window cracked. If not, we certainly cracked it shortly after using while we ran our first engraves and first cuts. And I quickly discovered that the fan in the back of the machine definitely does not have enough pull force to remove all of the smoke and pass it through the filter. There was smoke rising out of the sides of the lid as well as the very front of it. And they do include or offer a inline fan that is primarily what I've been using that uh, pulls a lot more air, but still would not recommend having this inside. I think it's, it's something that belongs in a garage or a shop. And if you are gonna do it inside, just make sure you have the correct setup where you're able to exhaust the smoke outside because of the filtration system, although it's nice that it includes it and it certainly does help, is not going to pass through and filter out all of the smoke, especially if you are running things like cuts. The laser's head has a nice little cover on it that's held on by magnets that you can easily take on or off. However, it wasn't very long after receiving it that the magnets came out of the cover and were sticking to the basically the back panel of it. And I did see in the Facebook group that this is a common thing. They do provide a Velcro strap to go around the laser cover to kind of hold it in place. But 
I really think it's something that they should fix. They either need to go with bigger magnets so there's more surface area for the adhesive they're using to bite onto, or they just need to go with a different adhesive. When you turn the laser on, both the filter and the air assist kick on right away and are on for the entire time your machine is on which does produce a lot of chatter, vibrations, and noise. The controller inside of the laser comes up as a Ruida controller, which typically has the option to have the software turn the air assist on or off, which is really nice, and it's something that I wish they had included. In the Guayqui Cloud and Cloud Pro, there's a little pressure gauge or dial that you can adjust to allow for more air or turn off the air, but the, the pump is still running the entire time. It just closes the air valve so that way no air can pass through to the head of the laser. It's not the end of the world. It still operates and functions the way it, it should in a sense. I mean, the air assist does work great, but I really, really wish that they had made it where it was software controllable because it, it would just be a really convenient and nice feature to have. When it comes to laser safety, that is something that is incredibly important and should be taken seriously. And I love that there is a sensor on the top lid as well as the front of the machine. So if either open while a job is running, it will instantly kill the laser. However, the current solution for using the rotary or the pass-through is to flip a little switch that basically locks the, the safety limit switch in place so it thinks it's closed. And I don't like that. I feel like there has to be a better solution. And if that is the solution, at least having a cover for the front of the laser, the part that you're taking off, having something to go in its place while you're using the rotary would be a safer option than leaving the front of the laser open. Overall, the Guayqui Cloud is a very impressive laser. And even with the six to $700 I spent upgrading my K40, this thing is just way more enjoyable to use and a lot more capable than that K40. Guayqui, the parent company to Guayqui Cloud, has been making industrial lasers for some time, which is really nice to see because it at least goes to show that they know lasers and they should also be able to support those lasers versus a company that maybe doesn't have any form of a track record. At $2,600 to $3,200 for the Guayqui Cloud or Cloud Pro, depending on the sale, it is definitely not an inexpensive laser. But when you compare it to similar machines on the market like the Glowforge, it is less than half the cost. If you are looking for a quality CO2 laser for personal projects or a small business, the Guayqui Cloud or Cloud Pro is a very competitive option. And that has been the Guayqui Cloud slash Cloud Pro, since they are basically the same laser with the difference being the rotary. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you do have any additional questions, please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. Guayqui did also provide me with a $200 off coupon. So if you're interested in picking up one of these lasers, I will have that link down below. And I would love to know in the comments down below how many of you watching this either have some form of a laser or have been interested or are looking into some kind of a laser for either engraving or cutting. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.